for the opportunity to give each week. And as a church, we want to be involved in uh, worldwide evangelism, wherever that may uh, take us. And we thank you that we have ministries that our church is supporting and, and help the, uh, all of us to think about what we can do this year to give uh, towards uh, the pledging of our church into the Great Commission Fund over and beyond the regular giving we give to the church. And uh, so we're grateful for the blessings you give to us, and we want to honor you in that way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And uh, as a pastor, and uh, I think as uh, uh, Victor has mentioned, we want to thank you for your giving last year. And so continue. Some of you have, have, have been very faithful in your giving, and some of you that haven't started, um, so you can start at, at, as soon as uh, the, you're, you're able to. So the Lord bless you. Uh, today, uh, Brother Steve uh, Hunter will be bringing the word. And so I think uh, he's got his uh, video ready. Uh, so let's give Steve a hand. Come on up, brother. Yeah. Yeah, Good morning. I gotta tone down my voice for the microphone, right? All right. This last week, we uh, we had a very special event in Plant City, and several of us went there, and it was incredible. There was uh, there was a, a a lot of people that came. Uh, someone said there was like ten thousand, but I think it was five thousand. <laughs> but it, you know, like any good fish story, right? It just starts multiplying because it was so awesome. Oh, that's okay. I won't need to. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe I will. We'll see. Um, uh, anyway, uh, I want to let you know that there were so many people that came to uh, to Christ uh, at the event, and uh, it was it was at the Strawberry Festival outdoors in, in that big stadium. It wasn't like the usual giant festival, ten thousand people kind or twenty thousand people stadiums uh, that uh, I had been in before uh, the, in the Billy Graham and Franklin Graham festivals, things like that, uh, and the revivals. Uh, but it was it was just as impactful, and he'd been in uh, an event in Jacksonville the week before, so he was he was so tired. I mean, the, excuse me, the, the that morning, so he was so tired when he got there, uh, and you could kind of tell that he was a little bit tired. He was he was a little worn from all that, but he still brought the word solid, and there was just so many people that were open to receive it, and so. Uh, I, I led this, this, this man, Clover, uh, his name was Clover, and it was just a cool name, and I led him to the Lord, and, uh, and he just held my hand. The minute I walked up to him, he wouldn't let go. He just would not let go, and uh, he'd been battling with addiction, and the Lord was just setting him free, and he was just so excited to, to, uh, to come to the knowledge of the Lord, and uh, and so uh, so we handed him a Bible and a, and a book to begin starting his walk, and uh, and uh, and it was just it was great just to see the joy, the hope, and that's what the whole message was about: the hope, the hope of knowing our Creator, the hope of knowing our purpose, the hope of of knowing meaning in life, the the just the the hope of this is why I was created, and uh, I've been searching so many avenues, and that's what he's been doing. And he'd been searching so many avenues, and now he was found, as the scriptures say. So that was that was really exciting. So I was I was thinking about that um, uh, as I was I was creating the sermon for today, and I was really thinking about as we're beginning a new year, as we're sort of reevaluating our own lives, as we're making our resolutions. Anybody here make resolutions? Oh, come on, please, somebody say you like review and, and like retune, right? Yeah. Um, I, I know this, uh, this, this one fellow, uh, Dr. Serrano, he does it four times a year with his wife. They take a day off, they just go away, they, 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 they just, just completely unplug, and it's all for kind of retune and re review, and, uh, and it's just, it's really good. I'm going to share it with you guys today so that uh, hopefully you guys will benefit from it and be able to apply it to your life. Uh, because it's really important that, uh, that you do review and you take a quick look at it. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go into some of those concepts. Let me bring my, my papers up here. All right. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Many of you are familiar with this chapter on love. We're going to focus on a couple of verses from this that you may not have focused on before. A little different than, than uh, you may have done before. Okay. 
And my, uh, my sermon is entitled, Resolve to Remember God with Clarity. Those, uh, those, those words were very carefully selected, uh, as, as you, you'll soon find out. All right, let's, uh, with, uh, with Jacob, Jacob, would you read that, uh, that for us? Uh, it's, uh, you have just a, a wonderful reading voice. Uh, uh, he does. He really does. He could, he could definitely narrate a radio show. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're just doing verses 1 through 13. We're going to end up focusing on the 12th and 13th verse, but I'd like you to, to read it in its, in its full context, and then we're going to focus on a, little, a couple verses towards the end. Chapter 13? Chapter 13. 1 through 13? Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a plain symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, Though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to be the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, does not provoke, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but when there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are prophecies, whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part, which is in part, will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. All right, so we see that... Uh that the, the, when the perfect comes, the imperfect disappears. And we really live in a very bit of an imperfect world here. Um, and we lack sometimes some clarity because of all the, the rush. Our society is in such a rush to get here, to get there. We're often so rude and, and dismissive of other people and, and just ignore them because we're in such a rush. Um, and we also do that to God. Don't think it's just other people. You can also do that to God. So this, this verse talks about finding that clarity. That clarity, of course, that will be cleared up. That will be cleared up as all things are restored. It will be cleared up as we go to heaven. It will be cleared up as we, we go into the eternal. But, but for now, it's, it's a little unclear at times. Um, and it also speaks of maturity. Uh, Christ wants us not to get a little spoonful of, uh, of the Bible each week, spoon fed and then starving all week long, um, and, and then wonder why we're anxious, wonder why we're confused and having a hard time making the right decisions. Uh, well, we're not operating in that all week long, right? So, so we need to, to work towards maturity so that we understand God's will for our lives. If we understand God's will, we can better please Him. That's awesome. I, I, I seek to please God. I want, I want his favor. He's an incredible God. I want to be on his side. It doesn't work so well on the other side. Trust me. The, the Bible talks very clearly about that. You don't want to be on the other side. And, um, it, it, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, it does speak of how clear things will be one day. Now, um, this is, this is a... a, a copy of the verse uh, in the Message Bible, and I thought this was a great way to take the, the 12th and 13th verse and make them crystal clear. The Message Bible is really good at doing that. It just goes right to the meaning. 
And so, so it says right here in, in this one, by the way, I wasn't a fan, fan of the Message Bible like many people probably in this congregation might not be. You don't want Message Bible, I'm NIV or I'm, I'm ESV or I'm King James. Or, but, but they all, all the, all the translations have a real specific purpose. This one is just get right to it, clear, everyday conversation so you really get the point. All right? So this says, we don't, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. Love the symbolism here, right? But it, it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all, then see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. But for right now, and, and that's you and I sitting right here, right? Until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God. That's faith, right? That's faith. Hope, unswervingly, right? We do not weave back and forth and, and waver on this. It's confident assurance, right? We, it's not hopey-wishy. This is confident assurance in what we can count on. And then love, love extravagantly, right? That's, that's really our hope. That somebody can say, that was a life well lived right there. That person was a faithful witness. You could tell by what? Their love. Their love for God and love for others. How can you say you love God and you don't love others? That's scripture right there, right? So we need to first start loving one another so that we can truly love the one we have not yet seen. Right? So... Sometimes, let's go to this next slide here. Sometimes our eyesight and hearing, they slowly fade. They faded here. As you guys have found me fumbling for my glasses at times. They, they, the, my eyesight, I could probably do microcircuitry until about you know, age 45. And uh, then all of a sudden, I'm like, why can't I see the words on the page? It went from like super clarity in a distance, super clarity up front to I need glasses, right? Fortunately, I just need them for reading at this point, but I, I expect that'll probably change too. Um, it's a, it's a, what we call a slow fade. Uh, a slow fade as you begin to go from normal eyesight, and if you notice, on the far sighted here and the near sighted, the focus is off, right? The light, same light's coming in, same image is there, the same situations, but we're not seeing them the same way. We're, we're either too far this way or too far that way, and we've lost perspective, right? Most of us start out pretty okay, but then everything suddenly one day changes, and, uh, and really, it's been changing all along, hasn't it? It doesn't happen in one day, does it? It's been happening slowly, but... Now we're so far off target, just like the light hitting the back of the eye there, that, that suddenly we, we have to do something about it now. We have to do something because now it doesn't work anymore. And, and that's where a lot of people are with changing things in their lives. They're going to remain right in the trouble that they're in. They're going to remain right in either the complacency, apathy, or, or issues, addictions, you name it. They're going to remain in those areas until the pain gets too much. Making the change is going to be easier than remaining where they were. Then they finally change. They change through pain. Um, I, I hope that you guys are, are willing to make the change before pain comes. But usually, it's just sort of our human nature not to. We, we only change when we have to, so we sort of glide along. We're sort of gliding along in what I would define as a fog. And so let's see this next slide here. Has anybody here boated in a deep fog before? I've, I've boated along in a deep fog that was so thick that I couldn't see Sally sitting in front of me. And, and so when you're in a fog like that, like these guys, are we going the right direction? They better be following a compass that's accurate or they could be way off target. Do you know one degree off in the fog like that? And you could, over time, that one little degree begins to expand because you're keeping it that one degree off and off and off, and next thing you know, you miss that island by a mile. You're nowhere close. 
And now you're in the middle of the sea, and you don't know if the island was on the right or the left. That's scary, right? That's very scary. Um, and, and so, and, and anything else can sneak up on you, the bigger ships or whatever, and, and, and all of a sudden you're in trouble. And, and that's kind of where we often are. Um, you know, we're, we're just finally snapped out of that fog. We've been going a completely wrong direction and never even realized it. And sometimes that's because of our habits. We've just not cultivated the right habits to have the growth in our life. Uh, and I'll give you a great example. High school students, they're like, oh, I'm so, I'm, I just do not want to read because all I spend my time doing is reading, right? I'm reading all this stuff for school. The last thing I want to do when I get out of school is read again, right? Um, I was that guy <laughs> at one point. Now I just love, I just read when I have to. I read when I don't have to. Um, but I've developed disciplines, and those disciplines have created the love. And, and that's kind of weird like that. But... Uh, Disciplines are very, very important, and there's disciplines in the Christian walk as well, so we don't glide along until there's a deficit, and then you're way behind. I'll give you a, a, another example of that. Uh, I, I run into a lot of, of senior citizens who you're, you're like, this guy's been in the church forever, he's an elder, he's, 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 he's always carrying his Bible, but he's not been open in it. And uh, now he's, he's a senior citizen, but he's in an elementary school of the Bible. And that's not a good place to be, is it? Uh, if, if you did the same thing with your schoolwork, you'd be in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't, you don't want to do that. So we've got to always be retuning, be careful that with this fog isn't leading this the wrong way, that our eyesight isn't off, our perspective isn't off, and that we have the eyes of God, that we are following his word and his direction, that we are seeing life clearly. And because we aren't God, we need to lean on him. We need to lean on his word. We need to lean in prayer. We need to lean in fellowship with one another. We need to gain the, 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 the uh, perspective that our pastor can, can give to us so, or, or somebody that fills in, <laughs> you know, the, the youth pastor. So we need to have those perspective uh, tunings, right? And you should be perspective tuning your life every day. The other day I said to my wife, I said, you know, I, I really do like movies, but I think we should cancel the Netflix account. She's like, wait a minute, I love movies. I'm like, yeah, but Netflix is so full of garbage and uh, that I, I, I just don't like the influences. And so I would really just, I'd be glad just to, to get rid of it um, because I don't, I'm not gonna use it. And so um, I, really, I really think that we need to, to be able to make those sacrifices if we think those have a negative influence on us, no matter what they may be. And we're all different that way. Uh, it may be substances, it may be places you go, it may be things that you are listening to, uh, you know, like 80s music. My wife loves 80s music. I mean, we grew up in the 80s, right? But as we moved along, further along, there's less and less the 80s music that we like because we begin to actually hear the lyrics behind the 80s music. And we begin to realize, you know, that's a, it's a catchy little tune, but it's leading down a wrong road. And I'm listening to that. I'm absorbing that. I am singing along with that. That's not good. And so there's a lot of little tunings that we need to do in our life. Now, I'm going to give you a great example from a very popular group that my, my daughter called really old school. Um, it's called Casting Crowns. Now, to all of us, that's not old school, but to my daughter, she's like, oh, casting crowns. Um, so, but I think that you guys will really, really enjoy the lyrics on this because they talk about a slow infidelity. A slow infidelity, and that's really what we're doing with God. A slow infidelity towards God in some of our thoughts, some of our actions, some of our words. So let's take a look at this. The slow fade. It says, be careful, little eyes, what you see. It's the second glance that ties your hands as darkness pulls the strings. Be careful, little, little feet, where you go. For it's the little feet behind you that are sure to follow. And there's a lot of people that are following your witness. Uh, it's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It's a slow fade from black and white and turn to gray, just like the fog, right? And thoughts invade, choices are made. A price will be paid when you give yourself away. People never crumble in a day. 
it's a slow fade, it's a slow fade, and that's why every day we need a retune. Be careful, little, little ears, what you hear. When uh, flattering leads to compromises, that's a big problem. Little compromises make big compromises of time as you slide and glide away. The end is always near. Be careful, little lips, what you, what you say. For empty words and promises leave broken hearts astray. It's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It says it's a slow fade when black and white are turned to gray and thoughts invade, choices are made, a price will be paid when you give yourself away. People never crumble in a day. I'm glad that that's the chorus. It just keeps reminding you, right? It says the journey from your mind to your hands is shorter than you're thinking. Be careful if you think you stand, you just might be sinking. Could you imagine being in a sinking ship and just laying out, getting a tan, completely oblivious? That's, that's our lives, right? It's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It's a slow fade when black and white are turned to gray and thoughts invade, choices are made, a price will be paid when you give yourself away. People never crumble in a day. Daddies never crumble in a day. Families never crumble in a day. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And so we need to guard our eyes. We need to guard our ears. We need to guard our minds. That's your operating system. What are you filling it with? Are you bugging the operating system, right? And so uh, we have to be very, very careful uh, where our minds are going and we need to think on the things above. Um, we, need to correct, we need to gain what's called acuity. Anybody familiar with the word acuity? Acuity is a sharpness or keenness of thought, of vision or hearing. Merriam-Webster defines it as a keenness of perception. Your perception becomes your reality, right? All right, so we want you to have a passion and a fire in your soul because you're focused on the right things, not a passion and a fire in your soul for the wrong things. And you'll get a passion one way or the other, and, uh, and that's, that, that's kind of scary to think about, all right? Any person with an addiction can tell you about that. My friends, uh, I've, lost, uh, I've lost friends to suicide, and I've, I've had friends really um, dropping really hard to the bottom in addiction. So many that were very successful, very, very intelligent, very capable, very loving, good people who made the wrong choices slowly over time that went to really, really bad choices. And here's what all of them said. I have no idea how I got from here to there. Uh, and that's, it was just unfathomable to them that they actually went to where they went. But it was, like the song says, a slow fade. The next thing you know, a decade's gone, two decades. Uh, you know, a decade is gone, uh, uh, and, and, and you just have no idea how you got, how you wasted that decade on an addiction or whatever it may be, and, and you were just really going in the fog the wrong direction. Uh, one of my friends called it the, uh, the great gravity disease. I think that's, that's a good definition of, of the, Christian, uh, the Christian walk in America. The great gravity disease. It's like, why stand up when you can sit down? Why sit down when you can lay down? Why lay down when you can fall asleep? And there's a few of you back there in the back that are probably doing that right now. No. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope to keep you awake. But, but we, we, we tend to glide. We tend to fall asleep. We tend to tune it out and not we go, you know what? I need a nugget from this today because I need to make sure that I'm in the right direction. All right? So we glide spiritually, put it on autopilot. I'll be okay, I've got Jesus. I'm basically inoculated now. I've got enough Jesus to be okay. That's a bad place to be. That's most likely to slide away, right? Um, you, you want to put, uh, you want to put uh, 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 guards on your wall, like, like Nehemiah. You want to have guards on your wall to make sure that you are ready at any moment. And that's, that's the word. That's in prayer. That's in relationship. It's not in religiosity. You, you know, it's important that we come in fellowship here on Sundays. It's important we get in small groups. It's important that we, like, like we're calling each other at night and, and sharing Bible verses. That's, that's important time. Um, but it's not about what you 
do. It's about that relationship. It's about that growth. And those things are going to strengthen it. They're going to help you strengthen it. But you still got to have that relationship. It's about you and God, number one. You've got to have that. It's, it, you know, your allegiance is to God first. You know, so you need to have that, that straight. So I, I selected some, some interesting uh, wording here. And let's see, let's go to this next one here. Um, the, the wording that I s selected for this sermon is resolve to remember God with clarity. Okay? Resolve. First, resolving to set your mind on things of God. Right? The Bible says set your mind on things of God. Set. Setting is, is something that you've got to firm it up. You've got to keep it on the right dial there. You've got to make sure that you're set firm, right? It doesn't say just kind of glide over here and maybe it'll be there. It doesn't kind of work that way, does it? Not when you're navigating a pathway. Resolve to seek him with persistence and determination. As a martial arts master, I learned persistence and determination. It was crucial in every single one of the arts that I mastered that I stuck through broken ribs, that I stru stuck through broken arms, you know, that I stuck through the high impact uh, battles you know, with different people. I fought one guy who was seven foot eight. Uh, I couldn't even reach his body. Talk about persistence and determination to even stay in that battle, right? You know, you have to, you have to go, okay, I'm gonna be here for the long haul. How am I gonna win this fight? That's what you need to think about your Christian walk. I'm going to be in this for the long haul. How am I going to win this fight? You've got to, you've got to know that there's certain rules of engagement. Like if I'm going hand to hand, there's certain rules of engagement. His opening is my is where I make my strike. I don't strike when he doesn't give me the opening, right? It's the same thing in the spiritual walk. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I am going to I'm going to get in prayer because I know that's important. I'm going to get in the Bible because I know that's important. I know those are my opportunities. So when they when when Satan strikes, he's going to give me that opening and I'm ready. Right. But I've got to train in the meantime. Right. I just can't just walk in and go. Yeah, I'm, I'm Bruce Lee. It doesn't happen overnight, does it? Bruce Lee probably wasn't very good at first, but given time, he was real good. All right. So. We need to set, seek, and resolve to serve. Serving does something very important to our hearts. It also shows that you're not just all talk. You put your walk with your talk. You get out there and you find what your giftings are, and you get in there and you give all you can. Now, how would it how would it be if if, if Pastor Ed, for instance, said, you know, my gifting, I found it. It's teaching and preaching. But I'm going to just kind of sort of do it, you know. Uh, I, I might even show up for church. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting here and he's kind of going like, you're like, where's the pastor? And then when he comes in, he's like, you know, I haven't prepared anything, but um, let's open something. You, you, you guys would be pretty, like, confused, wouldn't you? How many of you guys have, have, have found those times in your own life where you've kind of approached your own walk that way? You know what your giftings are, but you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, I know what my giftings are, but I'm, you know, I'm going to turn on the TV. You know, I, this guy over here needs what I can give, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to just kind of glide. We've got to be careful of that. Got to be careful of that. So resolving. You've got to resolve. Making a resolution is okay. But if you set a, a, a trigger, at a time frame, an initial start plan, a goal, you set everything out, you're going to get to it. And you stay with persistence and determination. Christian walk, no different. In fact, I hope you have Christian resolutions. Um, and then next we have to remember. Remembering. The Bible talks about remembering. Remembering first what Jesus did for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Before you were born, he knew you, he loved you, he called you by name, he wanted you, he died for you, and the scriptures foretold of his coming exactly his perfect plan. He fulfilled that plan. He fulfilled every single promise the word says he's going to have, going to do. And, and you know what? This is something that the, the Jewish culture is great at doing. They say, remember Remember, they have all these festivals to remember. Um, Shabbat, we do Shabbat. We do, you know, we do Passover. We do all these type of celebrations. My family do. We grab from those Jewish traditions, 
that are part of our Judeo-Christian culture, and we grab onto those because we want to remember, right? They're good things. And you want to read the Old Testament because that's the promises that were made. The New Testament, the promises fulfilled. So you want to remember. And then remember who he is. Never losing the fear of God, the reverence, the respect, his holiness, and awe for the King of kings, Lord of lords. How many times have you heard, you know, that, uh, yeah, Jesus is my friend, or it's just so, it's not who he is. He's so incredible. When you get your, your head around just a, a, just a little fingernail of what God is. It just blows your mind, and you want more and more of him, and you want to serve him more. So we need to remember who he is, what he did, who he is, and when, when he fulfilled those promises. Go to each one of those promises. If you lack faith, go and read every single one of those promises and see how faithful he has been and that he is completely unchangeable, that you can have trust, you can have faith in God. That's an awesome place to be, right? All right. And then finally, to gain clarity. Clarity in prayer. Clarity in the word. Clarity by searching your heart. There's things that we slowly, that slow drift begin to embrace that we shouldn't. Search your heart. Continuously search your heart. That's, that's one of the things I love about pure prayers is they're just so realistic about who they are and how fallible they are and how perfect God is. So let's go back to this verse and look at the verse one more time here. I'm going to add here to a couple of these here. Here, we don't yet see things clearly. We don't see God. We don't see life clearly, right? Here, we're squinting in a fog, right? The world is shining bright. I don't know if you've ever been in a fog like I have before, but all those water droplets, all of them reflect light. And it's like a wall. It's shining back at you so bright in your face that you can't see through it. That's how our world is. It's full of shiny objects, power, influence, money, just the busyness of it all. It's shining bright in your face, so bright you have to squint. You have to be purposeful to begin to see through it. And that is, that is very much talking about an active Christian walk. Squinting to see through it. And that's a deeper relationship with God. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then in heaven and eternity in, in the restored creation. We'll see it all as clearly as God sees us knowing him directly just as he knows us. Can you imagine that? Let's start seeing more clearly now. Let's start now. Let's start now. Let's raise a little bit of that fog. Let's see a little farther than we have been before. Be more like Christ. Let's lean in. Let's purposely try to squint through that fog. But for right now, until the completeness, we have three things to do toward, uh, to lead us towards that consummation. Trust steadily in God. That's faith. Hope unswervingly. Love extravagantly, and the best of these three is love.